Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Open Your Eyes to the Universe. I'm Gabrielle Martin, your host for this evening, and on behalf of the Universe team, we'd like to extend a warm welcome to our first episode for 2024. We've missed you a lot, and it's lovely to be back with you once again. Now, for those joining for the first time, Open Your Eyes to the Universe is a series of contemporary talks and conversations. We include open-eyed meditations and interviews with people who inspire and uplift others by sharing their wisdom or sharing their insights and experiences, and in doing so, co-create a better world. And as we begin tonight, we'd like to um, acknowledge, in a spirit of reconciliation, the Universe team would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of country throughout Australia and their connections to land, sea and community. And we pay our respect to the elders past and present, and we extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people here tonight. And we also acknowledge and respect the wise elder within us all and the collective wisdom of all those here this evening. And so here we are now in the first quarter of 2024 already. So I'd like you to cast your mind back to the 1st of January 2024, the Western New Year. And of course, the 1st of January is not the only New Year date. Perhaps you celebrated New Year, um, the Diwali celebration on the 12th of November in 23, or maybe the Chinese New Year on the 10th of February 24. There's so many ways and dates to celebrate newness, and I actually did a quick Google search. So I was fascinated to find some of them, and I'm going to romp you through these and the different traditions and varieties of countries and cultures that celebrate a new year. So, for example, you might have been watching the ball drop in the United States, or perhaps if you were in Brazil, you would have been heading to the beach, or enjoying the midnight countdown amidst the Pahutakawa trees in New Zealand. And if you were in Spain, then maybe you would have been eating 12 grapes, or eating soba noodles in Japan, or the French do it by feasting with champagne. And uh, perhaps you were sharing soup, yumu soup in Haiti, or throwing old plates in Denmark. If you're in Canada, you are likely to go ice fishing. In the Philippines, serving 12 round fruits and giving the gift of made tamales in Mexico, or hanging an onion outside the door in Greece. And uh, you could have been placing three potatoes under your bed in Colombia, or banging bread against the walls in Ireland. Or maybe if you're in Norway, you would have been celebrating with a towering cake or cleaning your home in Puerto Rico, or you could have been listening to Big Ben's Bells Toll in England, or maybe you simply slept through it all. But no matter the country or the culture or the date that you celebrated New Year, there seems to be a universal appreciation for newness and making resolutions for change. And making resolutions is perhaps the most popular New Year's tradition now, and previous generations have also um, you know, kind of participated in the art of setting goals for the upcoming year. And I noted that thousands of years ago, the Babylons made promises to the gods or their gods, Akitu, no, it's Akitu, which is part of their tradition, and it's a festival that celebrates the new year, so they're honouring their god there. And it's interesting, though, because their promises often involved things like um, paying debts, or returning borrowed farming equipment. So, such variety, and I don't know what you're doing, but cast your mind back and think, how did you celebrate your New Year? Did you make any New Year's resolutions? And if you did, can you remember them? So that's a bit of a trick. Research shows that New Year's resolutions only last, I don't know what you're going to think about this, what, six months, 30 seconds? The research showing that New Year's resolutions last seven days. So how are you tracking with yours if you made them? And you can let us know in the chat box if you like. As for me, I had uh, three attempts at the 2024 New Year. And on the dawns of Diwali, 1st of January and Chinese New Year, I slept peacefully through them all. And I can't remember what New Year's resolutions I've made, although I'm fairly sure I would have made some. Anyway, what I do know is that some sound spiritual wisdom is essential to have in one spiritual toolbox 
to guide us through the easy flows and the not so easy flows of 2024 and its remaining months ahead. And to help us with that, we're joined tonight by Aruna Ladva, an author and meditator. And she explores with us some of the wisdom and the insights she's gained on her path of personal transformation and fulfillment. And look, she's going to share some of the practical tools and techniques to help navigate the challenges and embrace the opportunities that may lie ahead this year. So I want to tell you just a little bit about Aruna if you don't already know her through her books. But she's been practicing meditation for over 40 years. And during this time, she has become a prolific writer, serving to make the spiritual wisdom she continues to gain genuinely accessible to others with a style and language that speaks to everyone. She was born in Kenya. She was educated in England. She lived and worked in Canada. She spent time in the US, Turkey, Kuwait, and other parts of the world. And she regularly travels to India and the headquarters of the Brahma Kumaris. She's a certified negotiator in conflict resolution and has a self-published book on the subject, Conflict Resolution. And as I mentioned, she's an author of many books and she's launched an eight-book series with the theme, It's Time. And that's a collection of inspired writing covering a wide range of relevant topics, you know, that are really relevant to today and the things that we're facing today. And I really like this uh, lovely award that Aruna was granted in 2014. She received a Woman of Excellence Award from the Yoga Federation of India for her contribution to social work. She works to promote inner peace and harmony, and her daily life reflects this. It's a daily life of meditation, a vegan diet, spiritual study and introversion, as a way of achieving a life of personal fulfillment and service to others. So where is Aruna based these days? She's lived in such a variety of countries. Well, you'll find her these days at the Barama Kamari's Global Retreat Centre in Oxfordshire in UK. And it's here that she facilitates retreats and training sessions and various self-development programs. And she continues to write her blog and work on other new publications. Now, Aruna, amidst your um, many countries that you've travelled, I'm not actually sure if you've visited Australia in person. Um, so check that out with you in a moment. Uh, and if you haven't, then, well, of course, it would be lovely to have you in person. But it's a delight to have you with us tonight virtually. So, Aruna, a very, very warm welcome to this part of the world, which we call Down Under. Thank you. Thank you, Gabriella. And thank you to the whole team. Lovely to be here. Yeah, it's 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 really a pleasure to have you with us. And um, so we are three quarter. We're a third of the way. No, we're a quarter of the way. Just about a quarter of the way into the new year, but um, not too late to brush up on some tips that might help us keep some of our resolutions. And thinking of the sorts of things that lie ahead. And I mean, I'm not asking you to crystal ball gaze, although you're welcome to if you have that skill um, or that talent. But yeah, you know, you can kind of almost predict some of the things that are likely to come up. And so I'd be really looking forward to hearing some of the things you've got to share with us tonight. Sure. Thanks. So, yeah, I mean, I'm glad that you left it um, more or less like an open slate. And um, so I think the best thing that I can do is share with you and share with everyone, you know, what has worked for me. And I think that's the best way forward. So I'm going to talk about um, some of the basic premises that I use when I'm making my inner effort. And I have a little slideshow. So, yeah, can you see that? Yes, spiritual insights. Yeah. Gorgeous. <laughs> yeah because I feel sometimes people are visual and um, things retain so let me begin by saying that um, when we talk of um, inner work it's really about focusing on you know building something new and not fighting the old 
so as you can see, Socrates' comment on um, the secret of change is to focus your energy, not on fighting the old, but on building the new. And I've been lucky that um, from a very young age, I've been on this path of personal development and um, it has really allowed me to see myself with a magnifying glass and to really know my strengths and weaknesses. Now, many a time I know that we know what are our weaknesses, but do we ever stop to know what are our strengths? And a lot of the time we are trying to fight off what is something we don't like as opposed to building on something that we do like or something that we feel is working. And so to help us on this, I've got a few pointers. So for example, I would suggest that you take the time to reinvent yourself. And what does that mean? That means that, again, when we start the new year, what are we doing? We are having a look at what happened in the past and what we would like to happen in the future. And so there's that in-between stage where we kind of in limbo, we know what hasn't worked, we know what has worked, but then how to step into the future. And I would even say step into the future self. So reinventing yourself is about taking stock uh, of yourself, which takes a lot of courage actually to sit with the self. And I've done this many times where I'm sitting on my couch and um, this is a new couch, so <laughs> not this one, <laughs> but I've been sitting on several couches throughout my life in different parts of the world. And I really am checking to see, uh, yeah, where am I headed? And then I tweak myself along the way. And I think that's important. So in the Brahma Kumari's philosophy, we say that you don't just check yourself, but you check and change. Because you can check yourself and then get depressed. But that's not good. Always good to, as I said, tweak yourself. You may not perfect yourself, but it's good to <laughs> tweak yourself. Take frequent breaks. What does this mean? That means that we need those pauses in life. I'm going to talk about this also separately in a few minutes. But for now, I would say, you know, take moments out from what you're doing. So if you are gardening, if you are cooking, if you are doing something else, then what do you do? Just take a pause. Take a pause. Take a step inside. Even as I speak now, if there wasn't the, the, the silence, the break in between, I wouldn't sound very good or it wouldn't be pleasant to the ears. So in the same way, when we're doing stuff, just take a pause, just take a break. And you'll find that that automatically slows the mind down. It's not about being inefficient, but it's about knowing, you know, what it is that you need to do. Discipline. Discipline is very important. You know, you might have seen those pictures where the monks take off their slippers. Male monks, female monks. Even could be others, but I've seen this particularly with them. And if you look outside the hall or the room, every slipper is placed orderly. They're taking time to do that. And this reflects the discipline in their mind. A disciplined mind creates discipline in your life. Again, find your discipline. Know your strengths. What are your strengths? As I've mentioned, take time to look. Go back to basics. What is going back to basics? Again, to appreciate attitude of gratitude, appreciate the natural things in life. All the natural things in life are free of charge. Air, water, um, nature. 
everything that we need for survival is free. What is attitude of gratitude? Make a list, morning and evening. I say morning and evening because what you need in the morning <laughs> will be different from what you realized at night. Find at least 10 things that you are grateful for and take charge of the remote of your life. Don't allow other people to control what's going on in your life. And in particular, don't let them control your feelings and emotions. So I want to talk about this because, again, this is some other inner work that I've done for a long time. And that is to sit with your feelings. Right now, I'd like you to sit with your feelings. Just sit and ask yourself, how are you feeling? And don't just say good or bad. Just say, okay, can I define this a little more? Can I zoom in more on the type of feeling? And yeah, take a deep breath. So feelings are the barometer of our life. They let us know when we enjoy something, don't enjoy something, when we're anxious, when we're afraid. But we never actually stop to feel these feelings. So feelings, in my understanding and my vocabulary, are more positive. Whereas emotions are more on the negative side. We actually say emotion, energy in motion. So it's running, the energy is running. I'm not quite in control of it. And feelings are like this and emotions are like this, up and down. So feel the feeling means getting in touch with the feeling that I want to feel right now in this moment. Can I do that? Or again, am I being dictated by what is happening around me? So the most obvious is a traffic jam. You're in a traffic jam. You dictate your feelings. You're at a party. You're in some chaotic situation. You're on the tube or the train. You dictate how you feel. Take charge. So spirituality, we would say in essence, gets you into a higher spiritual frequency. As we begin to change our thoughts, elevate our thoughts, we start to create a different uh, frequency vibration. And actually it's about creating momentum. So at first you may think I'm not good at this, but it's okay, just keep at it. Create that first positive thought in the morning and then just keep adding to it. Another positive thought, another positive thought, another. It's like you've got a, a slow drip method. And then you set that in motion. So I want to give you um, this uh, example. It's developed by David R. Hawkins. And as you can see, what he's saying is that um, there is a critical point, which is around 200, where everything that calibrates below this point makes the body go weak and represents as the absence of truth. Everything above 200 makes the body go strong and represents the presence of truth. So ideally, we actually need to be vibrating at 500. And all this you do with your thoughts. You don't need anything else, no other tools. So are we, just check yourself against this grid. What's the feeling? And if I'm not in love, then why not? 
Do I have enough love for all the 8 billion souls of the world? That's how much love I need to have. And then I'm vibrating automatically in that frequency. So it's just a very, you know, a good um, chart, let's say, to measure and compare to. So yeah, just a few other things. Yeah, focus is so important on a spiritual journey. And what does focus mean? Focus means that where attention goes, energy flows. Where energy flows, life grows. I'm sure you've heard this many times. But do I heed to that? Do I really want to be focusing on the negative? Do I really want to be focusing on that problem? That person, that negative, um, distracting person? No. Let me put my energy to what I want to grow in my life. Focus means to stop expansion. We normally say put a full stop. What does it mean to put a full stop? It means no, no longer to think about that. Does this really warrant my attention? And if the answer is no, then I have to move on. So what I say is go general. If you can't quite control your thoughts in the moment, think of something absolutely out of the blue. Think of that beautiful tree standing out there and how it's growing and how the branches are. And, you know, just turn your attention to something else. And then declutter. Again, what do we do when we start the new year? We throw out things and we start to simplify our life. But here I'm asking you to declutter the mind. Because a simple mind, a decluttered mind will create a decluttered world around you. So they say if you haven't used something for two years, clothes, for example, tools, equipment, then just pass it on. Maybe somebody else has a better use for it. Again, finding your purpose is so important to stay on the spiritual journey. Everything in the world, just look around you, everything in the world has a purpose. What is your purpose? The clock, the bed, everything around you. Just have a look wherever you are. The pen, the table. What am I here to give, to share? That when you find your sense of purpose, you have a life. <laughs> That's what I would say. You have a reason to live. And that in itself just excites you. So what is the smallest change you can make that will make the biggest difference? Just ponder on that and maybe we can meditate on that. All of humanity's problems stem from man's inability to sit quietly in a room alone. Which is why I will vouch for meditation silence and solitude are so important so when you did start your new year did you fit in space and time for silence and solitude we came from silence and we will return to silence and we have to build a relationship with silence if i'm always afraid of silence then i don't have that inner power Power to deal with the sound. It's so, so important to take time out. And finally, I always talk about happiness because that's what we want to be. The basic feelings we want to experience are peace and happiness. But let me say happiness is homemade. You don't need something to be happy. As soon as you say because of this, then that's probably temporary physical happiness. You are just happy as you are. You don't need anything else. Happiness is contagious. Happiness is my strength, my wealth. Did you know that you look more pretty <laughs> when you smile, when you're happy? 
and happy from inside, not a fake smile. Happiness is my strength. When I'm happy, I'm able to do other things, extra things. When I'm sorrow, I have to get myself out of that, get to a normality, and then I can think of doing something else, taking initiative. So be happy no matter what. Really, that's my slogan for life. Be happy. And there'll be many things that are going to come to rob you of your happiness. But you know what? Don't let somebody else take charge of that. Okay, so I'm going to stop here, Gabe. And I think we'll do a little meditation. That Is sounds that lovely. Yeah, some lovely key messages coming through there, Aruna. It'd be, it'd be nice to consolidate that with the meditation. Please take That's us into one. Okay, sure. So yeah, just sit comfortably wherever you are. Just stop. Maybe you are listening on, on the move. But just take a few moments. And yeah, we just relax. Just feel grounded. And now we want to turn our attention <clears throat> to our inner world. And for that, we need stillness. For that, we need a bit of solitude. So right now, I'm going to ask you, what is your greatest strength? Each one of us is gifted with some special blessing and boon as we are born. So what is that for you? And it's not about a quality or a trait. It's about a virtue that you come into this life. We build our self-worth on not what we do, but who we are. So now that you've thought of that quality, I'd like you to really appreciate that quality. As though you are swimming in the ocean of that quality. It's enveloping you. It's running through your soul. You are that quality in and out. So some examples might be that you are kind. You are compassionate. You are benevolent. You are caring. You're a good listener. Listen with compassion. You are patient. And now I'd like you to visualize as though you are emitting that quality. So when we say emitting, when you are full of that quality, it's like you're radiating that quality. So let's say you are caring. So what will your eyes be like? What will your whole physical energy be like? What will your posture be like when you are kind and caring? What will be the tone of your voice? What will be the choice of your words? So just visualize yourself being that and then spreading that light.
And then that becomes contagious. The next person you meet feels that energy. And again, visualize that they become hooked to that quality. And now just visualize that wherever you go, you are that radiating light bulb, just spreading your light. And everyone is being touched by that one quality. You could have many others, but we're just focusing on that one now. And then what's the feeling back? All that love, that light, the blessings from others, boomerangs back to you. Making you feeling more elated, more happy. And this is the circle of life. So again, we come back to the self. Feeling absolutely calm and cool. And feeling totally grateful for all my inner strengths. It is I, the soul, that is filled with all these strengths and qualities. And as soon as I focus on that quality, every thought that emerges, emerges from that quality. That quality gives birth to my thoughts. Think positive, think peaceful, think powerful. and think pure-hearted thoughts. And now just visualize that whole energy running through your body. Every cell of your body is eavesdropping on your mind and carrying that message throughout the body. So even my cells are dancing. And that's how we empower our organs. Om Shanti. Thank you, Aruna. That was a very gentle process, of, um, a very strength-based meditation. It was beautiful. Um, one phrase you used, which I'd love you to expand on before you move into the second part of um of this particular episode as you talked about the circle of light, a lovely phrase. And I wondered if you could uh, expand on that a little. I'm sure our viewers would like to know about that one. Yeah, so basically it's about whatever I send out then comes back to me. So it sounds obvious, but we forget the initial point, which is, well, what, what do I want to receive? 
I may not think twice about what I send out, but we obviously are concerned about what we get back. So if I know that this karmic philosophy exists, then I need to be more mindful about what I am emitting. And that takes a lot of attention to be aware of my thoughts. Because thought, light is thought, isn't it? Thought is light. <clears throat> and so, yeah, it's it's about being conscious and mindful at every moment. But then it becomes second nature. It's not like you have to feel stressed all the time. But then, yeah, you become natural at it. And... Um... I'm tempted to ask you another question, if I may. I know we're going to move on, but just for our viewers, what kind of practice, uh, how long did it take you uh, to to be naturally mindful of your thoughts without it being a lot of, without exercising, consciously exercising a lot of discipline and a lot of attention, where it just became um, quite natural to you to, feel more peaceful or feel more light or whatever it is that you were focusing on? Yeah, I think you need um, a reason to be positive because uh, I'm getting at that slide that I was using about finding your purpose. Yes. Um, when I have a reason as to why I want to be a better person, not just about doing good in the world, but about really uh, bringing out the best in me or uh, being a kind person, a nice person, uh, being mindful of what's going to come back. When all that kind of knowledge uh, is in the back burner of my mind, then you automatically are conscious of creating the right thoughts. So what I'm trying to get at is you need a bit of knowledge, a bit of wisdom, a bit of reason, a bit of logic and then that automatically creates, helps you to create these kinds of peaceful, calming thoughts. So, for example, if I know that I don't want to create extra karmic accounts, negative karmic accounts with people, then I know that I need to be quiet. And I know that I shouldn't say something or I let things be where it's none of my business, uh, not to interfere, not to indulge. Um, so then, yeah, you just take control of yourself as opposed to trying to fix everything around you because you know that that's not really where you want to put your energy. Mm -hmm. So that becomes the reason. But how long did it take? Um, yeah, initially it took a while because I was a bit young and I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. So the knowledge was there, but I wasn't really sure that I wanted to practice it. But then once I got into it, and uh, followed the technique, then it's immediate. Mm. It's instantaneous, actually, because it's it's about you. It's about taking charge. It's like a switch, really, when mm. you know how. That's lovely. Good. Thanks for that. Well, Aruna, please please go on and um, uh, enjoying listening to you. So please uh, please continue. Right. So. I've mentioned all these things, and um, apart from that, I want to mention that we have to really be kind of altruistic. I know only God is the one who's totally altruistic, but just be and do because you want to do. And what I mean by that is just be because that's what you are. Don't try to be for the sake of others. Don't try to be something other than what you are. When, again, we are in this mindset of I'm a light worker and my job is to spread the light, or I would even say to reflect the light. The light is here. God's light is shining on me and I'm just then reflecting that light. And it's such a beautiful feeling when we do this. And the whole reason why we meditate is because we do want to become powerful people. 
We want to increase our sense of self-worth. What is self-worth? What is self-confidence? It's about feeling good about yourself. And where does that come from? That comes from your qualities, your wealth of qualities. So for example, if you have many qualities, but say, for example, you don't have many skills, people will still love you and want you because of your kind qualities. I'll give you the example of, let's say you have uh, a maid who comes to help you. Now, the maid may not be a great cleaner, but she's honest. She smiles all the time. We had a maid like that. She wasn't a great cleaner, but all the time she's happy, happy. And even if you tell her, this is not right, this is not right, she say, okay, <laughs> I'll do it again. So just her demeanor, her persona makes you want to keep her, even though the job is not great. So where are we putting the emphasis? The emphasis on the quality. And so same with us. That's what I'm saying. Like, what do we want to see in people, really? We want to see their goodness. When, you're, when you've spent uh, one hour with a negative person, you say, okay, you know, I got to move on. I got to go. But you spend a whole day with a positive person and you say, oh, please stay. So we are accustomed to wanting goodness around us. We are accustomed to appreciating other people's virtues, but we've got to admit that ourselves. We, we got to be the good company that we also want to experience back. So I would say, yeah, to increase self-worth, to increase sense of self, to bring spirituality in your life, it's about emerging those qualities and those qualities are right here inside of us we can't go buy them in the supermarket they don't grow on trees as much as we'd like to just pick them so the thing is that we've forgotten we've forgotten that those things that we want so badly are in our soul already and what is meditation meditation is about diving deep into the core of the soul and then emerging it, getting in touch with it. I am that. I'm, oh, I'm that as well. Oh, I'm that. It's those aha moments of I am all these beautiful things. And then what happens is I feel good and I feel confident and I feel empowered. What? From just looking at myself, looking at my strengths. So when I sit in meditation, yeah, the first premise is about creating a positive, powerful, pure thought. I mentioned these four Ps, right? Pure, peaceful, positive, powerful <coughs> thoughts. Sorry, I've just traveled back and my throat is not great. So dealing with that. <clears throat> Yes, pure, peaceful, positive, powerful thoughts. That becomes the criteria of your thinking. If they're not this thinking, then you have to put them aside and say, not yet, not now. So when you sit, you just settle down, create this powerful thought. And what do we want to do now? We want to experience it. We created it, but now we really want to become one with that thought. So let's take the classic example of peace. I am a peaceful soul. But what does that mean? See, a while ago, several years ago, I came to the conclusion it's not just I am a peaceful soul, but I am at peace with everything. So I'm at peace with my relationships. I'm at peace with wherever I am whichever country I'm in, with whatever people, with whatever help, with whatever finances, I'm at peace with all that. So it's not just I'm a peaceful soul, but I have to be at peace with everything around me. And then when I'm at peace with that, then when I sit in meditation, it's easy to take off. 
if I'm fighting, if I'm struggling, I need to deal with that first. It's not that you can't take off, but you need to just settle that. So whatever issue you have, you say, okay, right now, I'm going to give that person some good wishes, um, some pure feelings are going their way. Or if it's a situation I'm stressed about, I say to myself, okay, I know everything's going to work out. Everything's going to work out just fine. And if it doesn't, then I'm going to have the power to deal with it. And so these are the kinds of positive thoughts you are thinking. And then after that, you take off. Take off here means then I just zoom in into the, the virtue of peace. I am peace. Everything's peace. Everyone's peace. Just imagine, just visualize everything being peaceful. And then when you do that, what begins to happen is that you naturally just glide into that state of mind, into that consciousness. And then you don't say, I'm a peaceful soul. You just say, I am. I am that. And those are the experiences that we want to have in meditation so that when we come back into action, we carrying that peace with us. We go into meditation to stock up on our power so that then I'm able to use it when I come into action. If you look at everything, everything needs a break. In fact, now it's beautiful spring uh, in Oxford here. But, you know, I feel they took a break, right? The trees took a break. We all need to take a break. We cannot just keep going. We need a break for food, a break for water, a break for sleep. And then what about our mind? When does our mind take a break? So we can take short breaks, which is like in the middle of what you do, but then you need to take a little longer break. So you might take half an hour out for your meditation. So when you take half an hour out for your meditation, then you have to plan that a little bit and you say, okay, how am I going to use that half an hour? Don't just go and sit there and expect things to happen. No, at first you have to create some patterns of thinking. You have to kind of acclimatize your mind to thinking in that way. So that then after that, it does become natural. So now when I sit, I know, okay, one, two, three, and I'm off into that experience. So let's experiment with that now, actually, since we're talking about it. So again, let's do another little meditation on the experience of soul consciousness. So just focus on the center of this point and as you see there's all that light radiating around it. So I am just a tiny point of light but I radiate all this light. The soul is just light, made up of light. Nothing physical, nothing material. It's light energy. Now I am this soul, this light. And for a few moments now, I would like you to feel your eternity. The soul is not born and the soul does not die. I am eternal. No fire can burn me, no water can drown me, no sword can cut me.
I live on forever and ever and ever. This is such a liberating feeling. And then I am a soul and this is my body. The soul that the body is sitting in, that's my body. That's not me, that's my body. Just feel the separation between I and mine. Like you would say, this cup is mine. This pen is mine, it's separate from you. Look at it from the eyes of the soul. as though you're looking down onto the body. And now just place yourself a few inches above the body. Where you can see the body totally. So one moment I'm in and one moment I'm above. Just flex this muscle of being in the body, controlling the body and its senses, managing the body and its emotions, and then stepping out, looking at the body. Just try this a few times. And now looking at the body, I say to myself, what a lovely piece of instrument you are. I totally love and appreciate you. You are my only instrument at the moment. And I'm ever so grateful that you support me in everything I need to do. And maybe come up with some of your own statements of talking to the body. Dear body, I know that I push you sometimes beyond your limits. that I am ever so grateful. And then make a pact with the body that I'm gonna take care of you. I'm gonna try and feed you well, gonna give you rest. Just work with me. So again, still looking at the body, still a bit detached from the body, looking at the body. And then let's come back into the body. And now looking out of the body. And are you feeling a difference? sitting in your body.
Because when we are recharged, when we feel that strength, then we can handle everything around us. Okay. Let's come back to this moment. Mm. So, certainly some <clears throat> big treasures in the Aruna around um know developing our spiritual muscles I love the way you took us through those three steps and making them so distinct and seeing them as you know um very important spiritual exercises to undertake so you get that sense of distinction between body and soul and you use that term soul consciousness do you want to talk a little bit more about that perhaps yeah so as I've been mentioning, um, this is the body and I am a soul that's light that we believe is actually running this body. So when I'm aware of it and I'm aware of the goodness, goodness being all the virtues, then I'm in that soul conscious stage. When I'm aware of the negativity or um, even the shortcomings. So say, for example, now I say, no, I'm not good at this. I'm not, you know, I'm not going to get it right. These are actually body conscious thoughts. You have to just talk yourself into saying, no, I'm just going to do my best. It's going to turn out all right. And then you're working your way towards being more soul conscious. So even on a practical level, um, yeah, soul consciousness is about just being fully aware of the goodness of your soul. Mm. It's nice, fully aware of the goodness of your soul. It's a beautiful, beautiful way of understanding it. Um, I'd like to just pitch a question to you that's come in. It's a, it's kind of, it's moving off from soul consciousness, but one I think um, we need to consider, and it's how do I maintain hope? this year in a world that seems to be falling apart, increasing war, increasing complexity, increasing negativity. So how do I respond to all of this? And where is God in all of this? That's a big question. That's a, that's a big question. <laughs> big question. <laughs> Here we go, though. <laughs> yeah, we'll attempt. <laughs> um, well, let's answer the other one. Um, yeah, there is a lot happening in the world. But I go back to that other statement I made, which is really, where do I want to put my energy? And we can get consumed with the news and the negativity, and we can take sides that this one's right, this one's wrong, and then get emotional about that and react. And, and even in, in arguments, you know, at home, um, or with friends, somebody starts talking about someone, you have something to say. So it can get quite nasty and ugly. So yeah, again, what I would suggest is, um, you know, we don't have the answers, but we know that there's a, a drama that's being played out in the world. When I mean drama, I mean there's an interplay of souls and matter and karma. And we don't know what is right or wrong. In fact, we believe nothing is right or wrong. It just is. And so if I can keep this mindset of, you know, everybody's doing what they need to do. They're playing their part. They're acting out their script. What is it that I need to do? What is my script? How do I want to play out my script? So when I'm focused on what it is that I need to do, then I'm hopefully knowing that I'm positive, powerful, pure soul, and I'm here to do good. I'm acting out of virtue. And then I can 
add some positivity to the situation. So then I can deal with it. Then I can give hope to others that there are people that are doing good in the world. So if we just, you know, be bystanders and watch what's happening, what are we actually inputting? We're just adding fuel to the fire, actually. So, yeah, we know it exists. I'm not crossing that out. I'm not in denial. I know all that exists. But I choose to put my attention on sending out good vibes, good energy, and helping wherever I can, of course, in a practical way, these people. So that's what I'm doing. Is that sufficient, Gabe? Do you want to add anything to that? No, I think it's really good. It's a, it's a lovely response, actually, um, and drawing that distinction between, um, you know, seeing what's going on and choosing not to be part of it in terms of increasing the negativity, but being part of the positive solution or the positive response to, to something. Um, and I, I do think you're correct in that you can get really sucked into the negativity if you're going to overly indulge in it in the sense of viewing it and repeat viewing it and so on. So it's a and it does it is something that really does take away your sense of hope. Um, and I'm not surprised this one's come in this question's around hope. Um, it's such an important quality to have right now. Aruna, what and, about this other sorry? Yeah. No, and I want to add, Gabe, like we we don't even know what's the real truth. I mean, yeah. we just hear what the media tells us. So that's another thing to be mindful of is, again, don't be sub subjected to what's thrown at you. We don't know. We don't know the honest truth of what's going on, who's who's helping who, you know, in the guise of being at war even. We, we don't know. We don't know. So true, isn't it? Amount of fake news. It's phenomenal. I'd say fake news is omnipresent now. Yeah. 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 Um, the role of the divine in all of yes. this, Aruna? Yes, yes. Okay. Where's God in all of this? Yeah, yeah, it's a big one. Uh, but firstly, yeah, one has to believe that God exists. There has to be a God. That's the first thing. If you don't, then that's another story. Um, so we do, we believe that there is a God. Um, but I also believe that God is not here to fix what we have made wrong. Uh, God gives me the strength to put right what I've made wrong. Because if God were to just help me, he has to help all the 8 billion souls. And a very powerful quality of God is that God is fair. God is just. All religions believe in this. And I've spent a lot of time in the Middle East and so... God being, you know, the fair and just is very prominent there. So God is not going to just help me or you, but he's telling me, okay, you know, take power and enable yourself, help yourself. So when we sit in meditation, when we sit in prayer, what are we doing? We are connecting with that source. We are actually stepping away from the confines of this world matter, it's energy, low energy. We are raising our vibration, connecting with God and taking that power. And that power is then helping to fuel powerful action through us. So that is God's role. It's not God, you know, dictating all this drama that's happening, that there's this war or this country in conflict with this one. No. And he's not taking sides. And he doesn't like or dislike. I mean, there's just some things about God that I think would be obvious that he loves everyone. He loves ev if he's God, he has to love everyone, he or she, because God, I feel, doesn't have a gender. Mm -hmm. So God is my mother. God is my father. But the thing is, I have to be in relationship. I have to accept him to be my parent, my supreme parent. And then once I accept, acknowledge, then I automatically become a child and therefore an heir to all his powers. But I have to also do my bit. I have to take that step forward and acknowledge that there is this supreme energy that I can draw from. And it's as simple as that. That's why we actually say, remember God. 
it's remember, reconnect with that energy. And God is the most highest vibrating frequency. If everything in the world is an energy, then God is that highest vibrating frequency. And so I want to connect with that one all the time, not connect with these material energies that actually rob me of my power. I want to connect with an energy that actually gives me power. Even actually when we remember each other, we, we're not really giving energy. We always want something from, from people. We always want something from nature. I look out because I actually have a really wonderful view of the grounds of uh, the retreat center. So when we look at nature, we're always saying, oh, wonderful, wonderful. But how often do we sit and say, okay, I'm going to send you some loving vibes now? healing vibes and appreciative vibes. So yeah, God is the one that really I take from and he empowers me. And that's part of your meditation process, yes? Yeah, that's what mm -hmm. I do in meditation. Mm -hmm. So yeah, in the last meditation, we can do connect with the Supreme. Yeah, mm -hmm. we can experiment with that. Are you open to doing a little meditation commentary with us now on that that part of the meditation process? Yeah, sure. Can we do that? It'd be lovely. Sure. Okay, let's do that. Let's experiment with connecting with that supreme source of energy. So once again, just sit comfortably wherever you are. Take a deep breath. Just sink into your seat. So first part of meditation is always to come back to that soul conscious awareness. Getting to the truth. So the truth of me is that I am a soul. And we start from that premise that I am a pure, peaceful, powerful, so, so feel each of these qualities. Be in the conviction that you are these qualities. Feel the power, feel the peace, feel the positivity. Put everything else aside. If any other thoughts come, just say, okay, I'll deal with you later. And now I just take myself, I travel with my thought away from this body, away from this room, just going beyond your city, your country, just feel yourself flying above those things, gliding through the sky and as you look back you can see everything down below that green and blue planet is being left down below I move upwards and outwards and I'd like you to now imagine that there is a beautiful world of light that you are heading to. So there's the planet behind me. And in front of me, there is a beautiful expanse of soothing light. just like the light that you see here on the screen, it's like that. And as I come closer and closer to that light, I can feel the rays of that light. Just as you would feel the trickle of water 
in the same way you begin to feel the trickle of this supreme light. You just start to feel much calmer, more peaceful. Your thoughts are slowing down. Now I am soul to soul with this supreme light. Just as I am a soul, God the supreme is a soul. But his light is multi-million times more powerful than mine. And this is the meeting, the meeting that I have been waiting for. It's like a coming home. It's like a belonging. I can see that I can see that God only sees the beauty in me. I just sense it, I feel it. And I can feel the soul just filling up with this beautiful experience of being liberated, being free, being very light, light as in lightweight. And all I want to do is just sink into this moment. It's such a comforting feeling to have God by my side. When I have this one point of light, I need nothing else. Everything else is on one side. And this precious relationship on the other. And as I look into this mirror of God, I am reminded of how great I am. and the great work that I need to do. So I'm going to leave you for a few moments to just be with this light. And I'd like you to see what realizations you have. Just being with this supreme energy. Remembering with this extremely powerful radiating light.
so you can feel the silence of this world. You can feel the silence in your soul. You can feel that stillness. And so we're going to carry that back. Back to Mother Earth. So when you're ready, we're going to make that return journey. go back so again visualize yourself entering the sphere of earth back to your country back to your room back to your chair and back to the center of the forehead. And what a smooth landing. So you can just use this technique whenever you want, just in your mind, just step away whenever you want. So it could, as I said earlier, be just stepping away, looking at the body or then stepping away completely and then bringing yourself back again. And it really helps, really helps to detach. And it makes this drama also look so small. When you are actually moving away from a situation, like in a plane, then there is still some time where you can see and hear what's going on. But then as you move away further, you can see, but you can't hear what's going on. And then as you move further away, you can't see the detail, nor can you hear the sounds. So we want to kind of step away enough that we are kind of switched off from here and switched on to that light so that then I can feel full again and then I bring that power back. So yes, it is about flexing the muscles of your mind. It is about this kind of creative visualization. Um, but let me say that there is that energy. It's not that I'm just visualizing there's a God. But I do believe that there is that light that's ready to receive us. Because if we are souls, there's got to be our guardian, there's got to be our parent soul. And we always talk about good and evil. So if there is evil, there's got to be good. If we talk about negative energies, there's got to be a absolutely positive energy. And that is the divine energy. So, yeah, again, back to what is it that I need to do? I need to connect with that one. Well, thank you. Aruna, there's some uh, beautiful messages coming through there, and I'm very much appreciating the way that you've taken us on quite a journey this evening. Um, you were, you know, introducing some very um, important practical tips to help us navigate 2024, but also beyond that as well. I think they're universally relevant in terms of the time factor, but you're talking about reinventing yourself and taking frequent breaks and you use the word discipline and how this supported you in your journey um, and focusing on our strengths, you know, like we can quickly pick our weaknesses, but can we focus on our strengths and grow that because Wherever we put our attention, well, that's where we'll that's what will grow. Um, and I also like the reminder that you gave us about going back to basics, you know, in a world of increasing complexity um, and 
and consumption, huge consumption, going back to basics is such a such an important aspect of that. And um, and you you know you chipped in too with an attitude of gratitude morning and evening. So some lovely tips for our viewers around how to just stay anchored during 2024. But I'm also appreciating Aruna the way that you talked us through a meditation process as being a tool. Um, and you, know, you talked about the four P's and um, and how to stay absorbed in that, and that was pure, peaceful, positive, and powerful. But to take that as a thought and then create an experience from it. Uh, so some lovely things coming through there and particularly grateful too for that second part of the meditation journey, the connection with the divine. Uh, and I think you really navigated that journey aloud in a beautiful way so that our viewers could, um, could take that journey with you. So thank you for that indeed. A big thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much to the team. And Aruna, um, you know, you've uh, it's been a, a life well led and a life full of accomplishments. And um, although you did say that, of course, it's not accomplishments, but who you are, that really matters. But, um, you know, a very, very much a life well led. And I really want to thank you for being part of a global spiritual network of meditators. Um, and through this, you know, your enormous contribution to our world. And of course, I know you do that by reflecting the power of the divine. So thank you for joining Universe tonight. It's been a real big thank pleasure, a big treat to have you, you with us. Me. Yeah, thank you for having me. Thank yeah. you to the team. Om Shanti. So viewers, um, you might like to browse our online bookshop, Eternity Inc., which has a full uh, full range of books on self-empowerment and, and inner powers and always at not-for-profit prices. And you'll find Aruna's books there as well. So dive into them. Um, she has an incredible capacity to um, represent spiritual spirituality in a very clear way, uh, in a very gentle, beautiful way. So you'll find that wisdom in her books. So please check them out at Eternity Inc. And if you'd like to, to um, subscribe to Open Your Eyes to the Universe and receive monthly updates, then send us an email at special.events at au.brahmakamaris.org. And in terms of our next episode of Universe, well, you'll find us here again on the 27th of April at our usual time, 6 p.m. And just note that that will be daylight saving at that point. So um, join us at 6 p.m. AEDT. Uh, and so as we close out tonight, I'd just like to say, take care, walk lightly on this earth and stay true to your 2024 promises. Um, take on board the things that Aruna has shared with us tonight. And I think you're well positioned for a year of success in 2024 and continue to move forward on your spiritual journey. Okay, good night and Om Shanti.